Namaste. How's it going? Through the years that I've been teaching and sharing my experiences and lessons with you, and not just on this channel, but also from our website, I probably have connected to hundreds of people and addressed, if not thousands, hundreds of questions. Yeah. Looking back, as I write journals as well, I could yeah, probably have written a book yeah, from this connection. So thank you very much for inspiring me and yeah, bringing out the, well, the best in me. And always you know, develop my practice as well so I can share with you more insights. Okay, now, and I'd like to make this a uh, regular part of our uploads. I'll be sharing with you, you know, some of them without divulging the sensitive parts because there are the concerns which are delicate in nature. Not, I won't be touching on them. I will be focusing and giving you insights on the general ones. Uh, topics and questions which I feel you know, can resonate you know, to most of us. So hopefully um, this helps you you know, progress your learnings and experiences as well. All right, so our first topic is this. What is the most ideal position when meditating? Are we supposed to assume a sitting position as depicted on the box, or can we do other positions as well? All right, so it boils down to the nature, really. Personally, I'm a very active person. And meditation suits me when I am the most relaxed. Uh, so I do my meditation in the Shavasana. But yeah, the challenging part of that, doing the Shavasana, is that yeah, your mind could easily drift to sleep. Therefore, nature is important because I'm a, a light sleeper. Yeah. When I sleep, I know I am sleeping, something like that. When I'm dreaming, I know that I'm dreaming. And I could... Yeah, maintain my awareness as I go through the stages of sleep at night. Therefore, Shavasana suits me because uh, in the Shavasana, although I'm relaxed, I can keep my consciousness yeah, suspended. Yeah, I am not fully awake, neither I am drifting into deep sleep. Because Samadhi happens during those transitions from consciousness to unconsciousness from being conscious like this to the state of you're about to sleep and then from sleep you're about to dream and then even while you're dreaming and past dreaming. So Samadhi is for you to be able to maintain your light consciousness as you go through those stages of consciousness because when our autonomic functions slow down to the base level, the breath slows down too because we don't require much energy, we're just lying down relaxing then the subtle forces shall emerge. And it's a way of cleansing the energetic system. It happens every night during sleep. It's just that, since you know you're meditating, you witness yeah, this transition. All right. When the energy becomes so open, meaning the Shushim Nadi is open, yeah, then the energy will pave way for the cleansing of our energetic anatomy up to the brain. Right? And there are many levels of samadhi, but that's in a nutshell, the samadhi. So, yeah, when you are the most relaxed, yeah, that's, you can attain deeper meditative states. Yeah. If your consciousness is too involved in your practice, and it's difficult to attain that. I probably have attained Samadhi in like three or four situations. One, and then they happen in the most unexpected yeah, events. One is I was on the plane, I was flying, it happened, yes. One is I was doing my lessons and I just felt this energy rush to the brain. I further it and assumed the Shavasana and yeah, it continued to the Samadhi. And one is um, probably I was doing Pranayama. Yeah, yes, I was doing Nadi Shodhana and it happened. Yeah, but most of my deep, profound samadhis happen during Shavasana or even during sleep. And interesting, yeah, it will occur regularly between the hours of half past 12 in the morning to half past 2 in the morning. Yeah, and this uh, 
a significance, a scientific, well, purpose, a reason behind it. We go through a state of equilibrium every 90 minutes, once every 90 minutes. And the most potent ones are um, yeah, between 12 to 2 in the morning, 12 to 2 in the afternoon, and 6 or half past 4 and half past 6 at night, both night and evening. So those are the most potent, potent ones. The other ones, we go through uh, the state of equilibrium, but we barely feel them because we're busy with our tasks. Yeah, but of course, we need to allot separate time for our practice of asana, pranayama, and mudra, because um, those are like the preparatory observances leading to yeah, the purification of our energetic anatomy. So yes, yeah. Try yeah, various methods. Yeah, you might start with uh, your practice of the meditation sitting and try to sustain that for maybe a month or even two. Yeah, if that leaves you yeah, restless, if you cannot sustain it, then you know, why not? Yeah, do your meditation in reclining. If you do your meditation in the Shavasana, just make sure your head is slightly elevated so you are you know, practicing on an inclined yeah, angle, not perfectly flat. Yeah. Okay, now speaking of yeah, lying down flat, the reason why um, when we're learning yeah, pranayama or doing meditation, we need to keep our spine upright for safety. Yeah, why? Yeah, I've experienced this as well. Yeah, during my initial well stages, I would do my meditation lying down. Yeah, flat, even reclining, and I could already feel it's going to happen, but for some reason, my upper chakras are blocked, yeah, particularly around the throat, and I felt this bump, I felt, I felt this slump, yeah, stuck here, and, may, and that's the reason why, you know, we need to keep our bodies upright to prevent that pressure from building inside the chest, and of course, the, you know, the sensitive organs of the heart, so for safety, upright, but if you know you know, your capability, you know, your strength, then you know, there's, you know, there's no harm of really trying doing your you know, meditation in a reclining. And yes, you are, you are still elevated. You're not perfectly flat. And then that will prevent you from experiencing the heaviness. Good. Because if you're sitting, of course, you limit where you prevent that energy from, from getting stuck here because you're upright and the energy just goes down because if you're lying down flat, the energy could remain up here and this could, yeah, yeah essentially put heaviness in your yeah, heart region. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's really a matter of like, because I'm a very explorative practitioner, so I do things, yeah, being a teacher, so I think it's my responsibility to you know, go through the process and the many ways of doing it so I can you know, relate with you the experiences and make sure your practice is safe and progressive. All right, so make sure you accomplish you know, the techniques needed you know, for safety and purification. And this channel, I offer lots of them. So you can just follow the classes, the pranayama, and even listening to lectures like this really help you yeah, plan, yeah, assess, or even gauge your current practice. Yeah. And I'll see you in the next lesson. I will be growing this topic as we yeah, go along. Yeah. Namaste.